in this video, we are exploring the differences and similarities of uploading a CSV file into Notion and Coda, looking at how fast and easy it is to upload a file that contains more, more than 7,000 rows and more than 10 columns into Notion first and then Coda. So first, let's start from Notion. I've just created this empty page in Notion. And in here, I have the option to import a new file. So I'm going to choose that option here, and I can choose CSV from this menu. Now, I'm going to grab my CSV file right here. And now it says uploading, and it's going pretty fast. So we have reached 100%, and Notion is now importing my data. And here we go. It's been about two minutes and the upload has completed. So first, let's check that all my rows have been uploaded. So I'm going to count all right here. And there are 7,308, which corresponds to the original CSV file. One thing that I'm noticing is that it is a bit slow. If I scroll through this one, it is not very responsive. It is a Notion limitation to some degree when you have a very large database with more than 7,000 rows and more than 10 columns or properties, it does become slower by design. So in here, you can see that the transformation of the data, so turning all the columns into the appropriate data type was done properly, automatically by Notion, for example, that turned this column into a select property and that's item name because these are sample data of sales and so we have item name that is the product sold essentially then you can see that the purchase date has been turned into a date property as well which is great and then we have some number properties here so the transformation was done very well i would say when you have a database in notion you can also create views of that database so right here let's try to create a view by clicking on the plus icon right there and you can see it is a bit slow and then we can do a list view. And I would like to group by item. So in here, I'm going to type item. And then we have item name. That's what I want to group by. That is the product. Then here, I'm going to hide empty groups. And then I want to show sale price. And you can see that this was relatively fast. And so I have a list view where each entry is a sale. And this view is grouped by product. That is a toggle that you can expand. And here you can see the total amount of sales per item. And that is how to import a CSV in Notion and the performance as well as how to create a view and how smooth the overall experience is. Next up, we will move on to Coda and repeat the exact same process to see how that works, what are some similarities or differences between the tools. Now we are in Coda and I've just created an empty doc called Data Import Sandbox. And in here I have the Insert option open and I'm going to choose Import to import data in a CSV format. And in here, I will toggle this on because my CSV file has columns as headers. And then I'm going to do select file and I'm selecting the same exact file that I chose before to import into Notion. And here is my data set imported right there. Coda automatically created a table for me with the same name as the CSV file right here. And the ID column is the primary key. And when it comes to item name, you can see that while Notion automatically created a select property for it, Coda treated it as a text property. Whereas the purchase date is a date type, as you can see from here on this icon right there. And then we have all the numbers that have been transformed properly here. So the transformation was successful as well in Coda, very similar to Notion. The only difference is that the item name is simple text in Coda, whereas it was automatically transformed as a select property in Notion, which was 
appropriate for this kind of item. However, what we can do in Coda is we can create a table very easily from a column, for example, for item name, because we know that these items are repeating themselves because these are the products sold. Here, I can turn this into a select property pretty easily here by clicking on text, then column type will be select list and new. Now, this action will turn all my products into select options right here. Now, if I want to turn these select options into a table, I can do that very easily by clicking this button, convert to table. And this is a useful use case because when you're building a database, you can have multiple related tables. And in this case, we can have a table for my cells, which is this one that I've just imported with 7,000 rows, and also a table for my products that is related to my sales. In this way, I can then reuse my products for many different tables and create multiple relations, which is very useful to build my overall data structure. So if you want to convert this into a table, I'm going to hit convert to table, and then Coda is asking me, what's the name of that table? And where do you want to create it? In my case, I want to create it in a new page, and the table name is item name, and that's okay. So if I hit create, it says created a lookup table called item name. So you can see here that right now, this property has been turned into a lookup. And you can see that from this icon right there, there is a table, and you can see lookup options. So if I hover on the left sidebar menu, I have an item name page that was created for me by Coda. And this table contains all my products right here. Now let's go back to our sales imported data. And here we can see that first we need to check that all the 7,000 rows were imported. And so I'm going to hit control down arrow to go to the last row, and that is 7,308, which is correct. Control upward arrow to go back to the first row. And the next thing that we want to do is create a view of this table within my Coda doc. In Coda, you don't have the same layout as in Notion, where you can create multiple views on the same row right here, where you see the name of the table. Rather, in Coda, you can create a table from a page, which is also the case in Notion. And so in our case, we're going to create a new page right here that is going to be called sales by products. And here, I'm going to hit slash table. Then I'm getting the data from sample data set import Notion Coda. That is our sales. We can rename this into sales by product. And then we can group. We're going to add a group, and we are grouping by item name on the left, which gives us this look right here. And you can see, I can now expand this column right there. Each product is a toggle, and here you can see the total amount of rows or cells, in this case, per product. And then you can see all the details right here on each row. And that is the process of importing a CSV into Coda as well. So in this video, we looked at the differences or similarities between importing a relatively large CSV file of 7,000 rows into Notion first and Coda second. And we have seen how these two tools compare when it comes to uploading such a CSV file. Both apps performed pretty well. They were a bit slow in uploading the CSV file, about two minutes per app. And the experience was very similar. Although in Coda, it felt a bit smoother compared to Notion in the end. Not significantly so, because it was only a couple of seconds faster compared to Notion. So overall, that is how you import a CSV file into Notion and Coda, and how the experience looks like. If you have any comments or remarks, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.